All right, everyone, welcome to Chapter 1, Section 1, Introduction to Graphing. Uh, there's a couple th things that I want to let you know that are going to be different about this chapter. First of all, I'm using slightly different recording materials, so maybe the audio might be a little bit better. Um, and then also, you might notice that the, the mouse pointer and clicker is a little bit different. So um, that's the first thing. Second thing is that you might notice that a lot of this is already pre-filled out. In fact, all of it's pre-filled out. Um, that is going to allow me to make shorter videos, but things are going to go a bit faster. So what I really want you to do is feel free to pause the video and really just, um, if you need to more time to, to write things down because I'm going too fast, then I want you to take the time to pause it and actually write those down um, because the video is going to be a little bit shorter and my pace is going to be a little bit faster because maybe now you're a bit used to this whole idea of Edpuzzle and Flip Classroom and all that. Third thing is that some of these videos, the ones that are titled uh, "Featuring Desmos," is gonna are gonna have uh, things for you to do um, at home online on Desmos.com. So uh, Desmos is available as a website, D-E-S-M-O-S.com, and you can also uh, download the Desmos app to your phone or iPad or or iOS device. But when we get to it, uh, what I want you to do instead of writing something down, I want you to imitate what I'm doing completely, uh, click for click, button for button, m character for character. I want you to uh, imitate what I do on Desmos as a way of learning how to use Desmos so that you can um, use the techniques that I demonstrate uh, in your own work, both for the assignments and also for upcoming projects. So here we are, introduction to graphing. Uh, example one says to graph and label the points negative 3, 5. Well, if you have a negative here, then you can see you've got to go 1, 2, 3 over and up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. The negative here indicates going left, right. The first number is left, right. The second number is up, down. So if you want to do 4, 3, that would be start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 3, 1, 2, 3, and here's the point. If you switch the order of those, then you remember you might have to go 3 to the right and then 4 up. 0, 4, th these are all the trickiest ones. 0, 4 is going to be something you go left, right, 0, and then you go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here it is. Contrast that with negative 3, 0, you go left, right first, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then up 0, and this is where the point is. 0, 0 is just going to be the, at the middle. This is an ordered pair, and ordered pairs are going to be incredibly important because they have, they, they combine two different numbers together in the same idea. Negative 3 is paired with 0. Sometimes it's called the abscissa. I never use this. Uh, no one casually uses this in conversation, but you might see it in a textbook somewhere. Abscissa is the first number. Ordinate is the second one. Usually we'll just call this the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So, next, determine whether each ordered pair is a solution of 2x plus 3y equals 18. Well, if you want to, the, the way that they could be solutions is you take these, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate, and you plug them into the equation and see if you get a true statement. So 2 times negative 5 instead of the x plus 3 times 7 instead of the y equals, does that equal 18? That's kind of an open question. You calculate it, negative 10 plus 21, now that's not going to equal 18, that's going to equal 11. So the answer is, because this is a false statement, you can say that no, it is not a solution. Same thing here. Do you want to, you, if you want to determine whether or not the ordered pair three comma four is a solution, you take the values and you plug them in. Two times the app, the value of three plus three times the value of four is that equal to eighteen? Is six plus twelve equal to eighteen? Uh, you, you figure that out, and then you tell you figure out whether or not it is a solution. Uh, next graph. So if you give an any kind of equation like this, one way you can always graph, and maybe the the most reliable way of graphing, is by creating a table. Now this is a pretty involved table, so let me talk about it. First of all, you don't you might say, Mr. Bergman, do we have to put in all these points uh, for a table? Do tables always have to be this long? No, they don't always have to be. You have you you do have to deliver excellence. You have to figure out a way to. Um, to figure out what the pattern is, and here I've gotten one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points uh, to figure out what the pattern looks like. 
But I will say that the more points you do, the more likely it is you're going to get it right. So uh, sh make sure you show work. In addition, you might say, Mr. Bergman, I've seen other math teachers and other students make an XY table. They put the X here, and then the, usually this middle column isn't here, and then you have Y, like this, X and then Y, with nothing in between. Is that allowed? Well, I do want to say that for my class, you do have to show work. And I, th I always think that the more work you show, the more likely it is you're going to get correct. So it, the, the bad part about doing an XY table is that you're forced to do the calculation in your head. It really doesn't promote the idea of writing everything out and getting it correct. You would write out negative 3 and then somehow in your brain have to produce a 24 in order to fill out the table. And that's just not a very good way to do it. I think the better way to do it is to write the x col column here, write the middle column here, um, copy the equation, and then you can fill in instead of x each time you can figure out what the x value is. So for example, if y equals x squared minus 9x minus 12, then you can write y equals negative 3 squared in parentheses, the negative 3, minus 9 times what your x value is, negative 3 minus 12. And then you simplify that, and you get 24. Um, so therefore, you have to make sure you plot the point negative 3, 24. Um, I think actually easier not easier values, you don't always have to take negative values. You don't, and you never have to do them first. I think it's actually easier to do positive values first. So you plug in the 12. 12 squared is 144. Minus 9 times 12 is 108. Minus 12. If you calculate that out, uh, and you don't have to do that in your head, you can do this either in a calculator or side work or whatever, eventually you get 24. And so you should plot the point 12, 24. If you go through this whole table and you produce all these points to plot, then eventually you'll get something like this. Here's the graph. Point, 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 point. And then you connect them and you see you've got this U-shaped thing called a parabola. I will study them more next uh, in next chapter, chapters 2 and 3, but for now, um, what I really want to show you is how to make a table. So it goes like this, equation, table, graph. Anytime, notice that you'll see the word, the instructions say for you to graph this equation. And some students will jump straight to the graph and they'll be like, how do I graph this? Well, what you're missing is the table. Go. The order is equation, table, graph. Say it with me, everyone, out loud, wherever you are right now. Equation, table, graph graph say it right so that's the way that's the way you make sure you remember how to do this um, I wanted to show you another way to make a table so instead of you I mean what you could usually do is you could put take this equation make a table and then from the table you make a graph and so often you'll just choose x values and enough x values until eventually you get what you need like we did here choose choose these x values whichever ones you want and then calculate the y values but I do want to say that it's also possible to choose the x value to calculate the y value. You could even choose a y value and back calculate the x value. That's, in, that's very, um, this is a helpful technique to use when you have, uh, when you want to calculate the x and y intercepts. So you choose 0, see 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 18. So therefore this cancels out and you're just left with 3y equals 18. Therefore, y has got to equal 6. You've got the y-intercept, 0, comma, 6. 0, left or right, and up or down, 6. There's the point right here. It's the y-intercept. Now, if you wanted to choose y and back calculate 9, that's this, that would be the same thing. If y equals 0, you just say 2x plus 3 times 0 equals 18. This cancels out. You're left with 2x equals 18, or x equals 9. So the point you have to plot would be 9, comma, 0. That's the x-intercept. 9 comma 0 is right here, connected to with a line. So in general, you can choose the x values and calculate the y values. But if you if it's convenient and or if it's helpful, then you can also choose the y values like we did down here and back calculate an x value. So we've got some formulas here, and uh, maybe you've seen them in previous math classes. Maybe you haven't. Here's this crazy formula with all these different x's and y's, and it deserves a little bit of explanation. If you wanted to find the distance between these two, uh, this is based on the Pythagorean theorem, um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But if you wanted to, you could just memorize this, the distance formula, 
and remember that this is your point. The first point is x1 comma y1. The second comma the second point is x2 comma y2. And the distance between them, you take the square root of this entire crazy expression. The x2 value minus the x1 value squared plus well, the y2 value minus the y1 value squared. For example, if you wanted to find the distance between these two points, my strong suggestion would be to first label these x1, y1, x2, y2. There's so many different places to put these values and numbers. You're going to get them mixed up. My, I highly recommend you label them. That way uh, you'll know where to put them. Some people even really like to recopy the formula, and I think that's a good thing too. It's right up here, so um, so we don't have to recalculate copy it here but when you're doing the assignments I really recommend you as a first as a second step so first step is label these x1 y1 x2 y2 second step would be to recopy the formula that way you have something to look at um, x1 is x oh, sorry x2 is 3 x1 is negative 2 so 3 minus negative 2 squared plus y2 which is negative 6 minus y1 which is 2 squared Simplify, you get 3 plus 2, which is 5, and negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8. Squaring them both, you get 25 and 64, and then add them, you get square root of 89. Some people think that square root of 89, or some situations, square root of 89 is a more exact answer, but uh, if you want to know approximate, like if you're trying to actually build a house, you can't tell the, the the foreman to produce a lumber a size a lumber of a you know a piece of wood that is cut to square root of 89 inches or feet that's just not helpful sometimes you really just need to know uh, the decimal version and that's fine that'd be approximately 9.4 you get that from a calculator here's a mid midpoints of segments here's another formula if you so if you have these two points point uh, x1 y1 x2 y2 then what you can do is you can say this is the midpoint between the two is basically going to be the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. So if you want to find the midpoint, like I said, first, like before, the first best thing to do would be to just label these points x1, y1, x2, y2. So you're not, you're not trying to put them in, in the wrong place. Then you can find the averages of the x's, x1, x2, that'd be negative 4 plus 2 over 2. Find the average of the y's, negative 2 plus 5 over 2. You simplify them down, you get negative 1 and 1 1.5. That would be where the midpoint is. Notice that the answer isn't a value like this over here. It's not a number, it's actually a location on the graph. It's an ordered pair. That's the value negative 1, 1 1.5 on a graph. Uh, lastly, in this section, we've got circles. There's this crazy formula over here. It actually looks kind of like the Pythagorean theorem or distance formula. It's got these two parts that are squared. But basically what it's saying is that figure out all the x, y points that are a certain distance r, that's the radius of the circle, a certain distance away from a point h, comma k. So if you have a point, a circle is defined by a center and a radius. So you've got, if you've got an h comma k, you can put them here, h, k, and you've got a radius, you can put it here. So find the equation of the circle having radius 5, that's r, and the center 3, negative 7, that's h, and that's k. So you can put them in, this is h, h goes here, and k goes here, negative 7. And you can simplify these if you want a little bit, uh, x minus 3 squared plus y plus 7, well, minus the negative becomes plus 7, and then 5 squared is 25. The tricky thing about this is remember that there's subtraction here. Um, all right, so what you're going to see next is you're going to see uh, Desmos, and now that you're finished copying down the notes, the next thing you do have to do is uh, imitate what I do on Desmos. So you have another tab out on desmos.com and do exactly what I do. The reason you should do exactly what I do is to learn how to use Desmos for the assign upcoming assignment for the upcoming project, but also I am going to check in class to make sure that you've actually done it. So please make sure that you, that you can produce 
what I have produced. Um, you'll be like saving f uh, internet files, and I'll ask to see these files in class tomorrow. Have fun. First thing I'm going to do is go to desmos.com, and let's start graphing. Uh, just to show you around some different things, uh, first of all, here are the settings. You can go into projector mode, and uh, the things are going to look a, bit, a little bit better for me. You don't have to go into projector mode, actually, but it, it'll make for a better video. You'll be able to see things a bit better. So projector mode is there if you want it on the settings. And here's a keyboard down here. You can, see, you can type in different things if you ever want. There's a list of fun functions that you can use, stats, miscellaneous. Um, you, you generally won't need to use these very much. Most of what you need is done on the keyboard. So, hiding the functions, we've got, I'm going to plot a circle. X, type in X minus 3, and then you can hit the squared button. You can also hit Shift uh, 6 if you want for an exponent. And then plus parentheses Y minus 2, like this, Shift 6 squared equals, and then I'll type in a radius like um, 5 squared. And then I'm even going to type, um, type in a point, the point 3 comma 2. And yeah, let's show the label. So here's the, here's the point, and here's the circle. And you can see that uh, the circle that we typed in has a center h. The value of h would be 3, and the value of k would be 2, and the radius would be 5. Here's what it looks like. Uh, here's where things get interesting. You can actually just type in h and, uh, yeah, add the slider. So now h is going to be whatever value I give it, moving the circle left and right as we do the slider, which I think is pretty cool. So, uh, let's go nuts with sliders. Everything, everything is slider. Type in the entire formula r squared. Oops, not 22. There. So, yeah, I want all of these sliders. H, R, K, uh, and then H, comma, K. Um, by the way, I hope you're doing this at home. If you're not, now would be a good time to kind of pause the video and do what I've done. Type in everything you see here, and because we're going to save the file on, in your internet account pretty soon. So check this out. You can have sliders. This can be moving up and down. You know, I'm, I'm animating this. You can move H up and down. It kind of bounces around like that. You can even, um, you can even make this larger or smaller if you want to. Like this, you can see the radius gets larger and smaller. Awesome. Let's save this. Um, so you can press sign in and just sign in with Google. Easiest thing to do. So now you see your name here, and you should be able to save it. Let's save this as. Um, let's save this as precalc one one. No, we don't need to duplicate the graph. And now, what actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to add I'm going to add a folder for all of these things so that I'm not going to get too messy. Let's see. Put it in a folder. Put it in a folder. Put it in a folder. Say it with me. Put it in a folder. Put it in a folder. And now, if you want, it's not in the folder. Now it's in the, that little line means it's in the folder. Put all of these in the folder. Okay, so we don't need to see them. And in fact, we can hide them uh, clicking on these right here. Click, click. Don't need a label. So now, anytime you want the circle, you can just look here. I'm going to do a new one, a new expression, and the new expression is going to be midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula, if you'll remember, has, is a big set of parentheses. It's an ordered pair. It could look like um, 3 comma 2 or something like that, but actually it's a big division symbol. I'm going to type in x and then 1. You don't even have to do anything special. If it, Desmos is so awesome, it knows that when you type in x and then a 1, the 1 has got to be a subscript. It automatically makes it lower. x1 plus, I'm just typing in x and then a 2. And then I'm going to highlight all of this using the shift button and the arrows. And I'm going to do divided by 2. 
And yeah, yes, give me the sliders. So here we are, do the same thing. I'm just typing the letter Y, the number one, plus symbol. You could even use these if you want. Um, y and then two. And I'm gonna select this whole thing and then I'm gonna divide it by two. Yes, give me the sliders. So there's the point and I'm going to even plot the point x1 comma x2. Label. Let's bring these back. Okay. And then oh no, this is wrong. I don't want x2. I want y1. y1. So x2 comma y2 parentheses. So the awesome thing about this is that it's automatically going to calculate the midpoint right here. This is the midpoint and these are the two other points. Let's make these different colors. Midpoint can stay blue but I want the, this color to be orange. Great. So now you can see the midpoint is automatically calculated depending on what values I choose for x1, y1, move these over, the midpoint's always there. Can even label it if you want. Let's put these in a folder, midpoint folder, and let's see. Ah, I drag it onto the folder. When you drag it onto the folder, then that's what you get there. So now, anytime I want to hide them, all, all these expressions, I can just do that. And I can even click, 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 and uncheck the label. You can see it's blank again. All right. One more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add an expression. I'm just going to calculate. Oh, it's already there. Expression. I want to calculate what the distance is between those two points. Distance equals square root. Where's that square root button? It's right here. Square root of, you can also type in, if you ever want to, SQRT. It's smart enough to know that that's going to be a square root. Parentheses, x1 plus x2. Parentheses, squared button, plus. Parentheses. Oh, wait a minute. I always do this. Um, I always get the formula wrong. <laughs> x2 minus x1 squared. y2 minus y1 squared. And now you can see it automatically calculates the distance between those two points. Which two points? These two points. It, it remembers, it knows what x2 and y2 are. Uh, let's set the label here. Let's set the label here. And yeah, let's show these points. Click on that, click on the orange point, click on the green point, here it is. Now it's plotting them, and I can hide all these. And the distance between these two, it's automatically calculating at 6.9. Isn't that awesome? I think it is. Let's save it. Saving, saved, awesome. So now you can show me your your graph, anytime you go to Desmos and you're signed in, click the little hamburger right here, those three lines, and you should be able to get to pre-calc 1-1. And there it is. Make sure you can show that to me in class.